After sailing for over 2,500 miles across an endless blue expanse, a small island appears in the mist. That island is Oahu, and yes, we've traveled 2,500 nautical miles, the equivalent of one-tenth the distance around the Earth. Oahu is the heart of Hawaii. It's its political and economic center. It's home to its capital, Honolulu, and iconic locations and attractions like Waikiki Beach, Pearl Harbor, Diamond Head Crater, and more. Oahu has a population of 983,000, and it makes up a area of 597 square miles. All right, guys, I took a quick shower and uh... Yeah, we are supposed to uh, dock at the pier in Honolulu at 9 a.m. Oahu is the third largest Hawaiian island, with Hawaii being the largest and Maui being the second largest, with the islands Kauai and Malokai being in fourth and fifth, respectively. The nickname for Oahu is the Gathering Place. This large city you can see in the background here is Honolulu on Oahu's south shore. This area with the tall high-rise buildings and the crescent-shaped beach is the Waikiki neighborhood of Honolulu. It's known for its dining, nightlife, shopping, and uh, it's overlooked by the giant Diamond Head Crater, which is uh, what you're looking at right now. Diamond Head was given its English name by British soldiers in the 19th century, who named it for the calcite crystals on the adjacent beach. Yeah, the calcite crystals look like diamonds, so there you go, diamond head. Honolulu is Hawaiian for sheltered harbor, or calm port. Honolulu has a population of 343,000. Looks like here comes the coast guard, or the harbor master or whatever, to guide the ship in as we head towards the pier here at Honolulu. Honolulu is the capital of the Hawaiian Islands and has been so since 1845, firstly of the independent Hawaiian Kingdom and since 1898 of the U.S. Territory and State of Hawaii. It's been about 8 a.m. ship time and as you can see we're sailing into, into port here in Honolulu. We'll be at the pier in about an hour or so. Alright, it is day 6 of the 15 night Hawaiian cruise and uh, We've been at sea for five days straight, and uh, we have reached our first destination, so I'm supposed to head over to the Diamond Head Crater uh, at 2 p.m. today to do a hike up there. It's supposed to be a pretty nice view, so better charge my batteries. Hawaii officially became a U.S. territory on August 12th of 1898, and on August 21st of 1959, Hawaii became the 50th state in the United States. The Discovery Princess carefully makes its way into port in Honolulu, where she'll stay berthed at the pier for the next two nights. So we'll be in uh, we'll be in Honolulu till I believe we sail out at 8 p.m. on day seven. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to check out Hawaii. And get down over to Waikiki Beach and then make my way down over to Diamond Head Crater for that hike at 2 p.m. So as you can tell, Diamond Head Crater or whatever is seemingly looking like it's like pretty far away from here. Uh, I have an appointment. Uh, I, I have a ticket to hike the uh, crater. I pre-purchased it because they said sometimes they'll sell out. So I just bought one online like a month ago. But uh, yeah, it's pretty far away. So I probably have to take an Uber over there because it looks like it would take days to walk over there. And yeah, it's just about 9 a.m. here in Honolulu. All right, let's head down there. This is my most west I've ever been and uh, my first time in Hawaii. Let's check it out. Damn, it feels good to be off that ship. Five, five days at sea. Here we are in Honolulu, day six. It's about a little after 9 a.m. I'm gonna go explore around here a bit and... Uh... It's 
a whole little convoy of military trucks here, so yeah, it must be, uh, oh, here's a military base, maybe? I don't know. Lobster crackers. Interesting. They had an amazing assortment of snacks at the Long Drugs. Alright, I'm taking a lift over to Waikiki Beach. I could ride to Waikiki. It's only like five bucks for me to lift over there. So. Here we go. Yep. Yeah, I've been like, I, lived, I used to live, live in Vegas. I lived in Vegas for a couple of years, so. Really? What part? Uh, just uh, like right off the strip. We begin to enter the Waikiki neighborhood of uh, Honolulu, and you'll see tons of great restaurants, lots of high-end shops. It's a destination here if you need oh, really? to do some shopping on your trip. On my second day in Honolulu, I explored some of these bars and restaurants with some of the friends I made from the cruise ship. On the second day, I uh, hang out with them. They rented a car, and uh, we go and visit a bunch of different scenic outlooks, and it's really amazing. Something worth seeing. I swear we drove by these shops for miles. Like It was really impressive just how many of them there were. All right, here is Waikiki Beach. Uh, it is, what, 11.30 almost? Yeah, I got a few hours to kill before Diamond Head Crater, so I'm just gonna wander around and uh, see, what's, see what this place is all about. Welcome to Waikiki Beach. Waikiki attracts 72,000 visitors on any given day, accounting for nearly half of all tourists across the state of Hawaii. And tourism is a major part of Hawaii's economy. In 2019, the visitor industry supported 216,000 jobs statewide. It also yielded over $17.8 billion in visitor spending. I did bring my swimsuit and uh, I, did, I couldn't find a towel, but yeah, I got a swimsuit. Waikiki means spouting fresh water in the Hawaiian language. For the springs and streams that fed the wetlands that once separated Waikiki from the interior. In the 19th century, Waikiki was considered a playground for Hawaiian royalty. The Moana Surfrider Hotel. The Duke was a Hawaiian competition swimmer who popularized the sport of surfing. They have a bunch of these cool statues all over town. Next, what we have here is a banyan tree. It's a species of fig tree that it can grow outwards from the stump and it can grow from the roots that are uh, coming down. These trees are centuries old and uh, yeah, they provide shade to the surfers and tourists on the beach. Yeah, and these trees are massive. All these little fake lagoons set up is pretty cool. This is about square in the middle of the Waikiki beach area. Very impressive. Waikiki Beach is actually a series of five beaches. From Iwa to Diamond Head, these beaches include Duke Kahanamoku, Port de Rusi, Rei, Waikiki, and Kuyo. This is about the uh, center of the Waikiki Beach area here. And uh, yeah, this is about halfway from uh, the cruise ship to uh, the Diamond Head uh, Trail, so. A lot of statues. This is uh, Prince Jonah Kuho Kalanaho. Waikiki is the birthplace of modern surfing. The father of modern surfing, Duke Kahanamoko, grew up in Waikiki. 
where the Royal Hawaiian Hotel stands. Ooh, this today. guy's got a little uh, seal friend over here. This statue is Makua and Kila, based on a children's story by Fred Van Dyke, honoring the Hawaiian values of love and respect for Ohana, family, and the ocean. Uh, break wall over here uh, and you can see diamond head crater right over here uh, we're almost there so reservation is at 2 p.m. it's like it's like almost noon now so I've still got a couple hours to kill people like surfing out here people are just kids are chilling here on the break wall I have never really seen people surfing before. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, again, here is uh, Diamond Head Crater in the distance there that is my next stop and uh, yeah it's over here at Waikiki Beach Waikiki Beach is partially engineered and has been filled with imported sand for decades and it's unfortunately in danger of being lost entirely beaches faced major erosion problems since the late 1800s when hotels and homes were built too close to the natural shoreline I'm thinking they put up these big break walls here, uh, not just for the swimmers, but to help uh, with the erosion problem. And uh, if you're lucky, you can spot some Hawaiian green sea turtles here. I didn't get a chance to go snorkeling in Oahu, but uh, maybe next time. Yeah, beach volleyball over here. Hawaiians have great respect for their culture and history, and you can see it by how well kept all these statues are. Surfer on a wave. Robert Hashby. Nice work, Robert. Nice work. As we enter the Queen Kapiolani Park, there is a statue of her. Queen Kapiolani was the queen of the Kingdom of queen Hawaii Kapi from Olani. February 12, 1874 to January 20th, 1891. It's another really nice park over Kapi here. Kapiolani was deeply interested in the health and welfare of native Hawaiians. She founded a home for girls and a maternity home. As i am uh, got about a mile left till I reach Diamond Head Crater. I have a way of vastly overestimating my physical attributes. Stopped at a place on the way to get some poke and uh, yeah, there, someone was feeding some chickens in the parking lot. There are chickens everywhere in Hawaii. At least, I mean, not in the Waikiki Beach area, but uh, over near the crater for sure. So, you can see Waikiki Beach in distance and uh, this road is like well like at a 15 degree incline so I'm slowly making my way up here but yeah, maybe I should have Ubered here maybe University of Hawaii Culinary Institute of the Pacific. Right here on the rim of the Diamond Head Crater. Well, you can see Waikiki Beach in the background there. This is a nice area. Saw some people over there that were uh, reading some uh, reading some information about the uh, Diamond Head. 
And I'm like, how do you get in there? And they're like, oh, you go another, another about quarter mile around. I'm like, okay, heading over there. He's like, good luck. It was one of those good lucks where he was like, yeah, I don't think he thinks I was gonna make it. There's like 500 chickens straight ahead. Yes, they weren't all chickens. I saw like some little chickens, maybe a quail. So I'm guessing uh, this crater used to be home to a fort of some sort. Oh no, didn't do any history homework. Wow, I think I almost circumnavigated the entire crater. But I did buy my uh, pass uh, about a month in advance, so we should be good to go. I really hope the trail does not look like this, because I am going to die if it is. I'm not even going to attempt. Diamond Head is a volcanic tuff cone, and Diamond Head is an extinct volcano, meaning it's not going to erupt again anytime soon. At the uh, walking up this pathway, I guess this road must wrap around the crater, and there's an entrance. The actual park is inside. Uh, this is a sick view, though. Diamond Head was created within a few days, four to five hundred thousand years ago, during one of the final outbursts of the Kau Alu volcano. Sweet view up here. So I enter the crater, you have to drive through the rim of the crater. So there's a tunnel that goes underneath. So vehicles and a passenger lane here too. It's pretty, pretty insane. It's only one way through. Watch for falling rocks. Fort Ruger is a fort on the island that served as a the first military reservation in the territory of Hawaii. It was named after the Civil War General Thomas H. Ruger and built in and around Diamond Head Crater. All right, I uh, survived the little tunnel here and uh, we'll see what's next. All right, now I'm inside the crater. As you can see, uh, it's like a little park over here. I go check in. Alright, if I didn't have an advanced reservation, I wouldn't have gone in. The people behind me did not, and they got rejected, so... They told me about this on the cruise ship uh, Facebook group, so... Uh, fortunate. There's tree cover, and so from a hiking standpoint, in the middle of the day when it's the hottest, um, it's probably the most risky time to go hiking. And if you are going to go hiking, we ask you to go in the morning when it's a little bit cooler, maybe a little bit later in the afternoon. Um, and then if you are going to go in the middle of the day, because that might be the only reservation open, take plenty of water. Take water, take snacks, and then of course a cell phone that's fully charged. So if you get into it, says this is an extremely dangerous hike. So I'm watching this safety video about how it's how you shouldn't hike during the middle of the day because it's the hottest time, obviously. And uh, here I am. I hiked all the way to the middle of Diamond Head Crater from Waikiki Beach, which was mostly uphill. But anyway, they tell you dehydration is the biggest issue here. I brought four bottles of water. They, they said to take plenty of bottles of water. You can buy bottles of water at the little park. It's a little like park station. They've got some vending machines next to the bathroom. Uh, four bottles of water wasn't enough. I was really rationing my water on the way down. My friends who'd been to uh, Honolulu before recommended I do the Diamond Head Crater Trail hike, and uh, I wasn't really sure what to expect, but uh, yeah, it was way wilder and way steeper than I imagined. It takes you right up there. You're uh, hiking up to the top here, the highest peak, and uh, it is... Uh, Quite, quite a ways up, you will see.
This point is about halfway, and uh, what happens now is it starts to get a lot steeper. This isn't paved, it's just kind of like uh, a rocky path. It's kind of like... I guess they probably uh, blasted the path in with dynamite or whatever. Almost to the top. It's a uh, pretty rough terrain, but yeah, we got this. Next, I enter this enclosed area, kind of like, yeah, blasted through the side of the crater. And uh, you walk through here for a while. I'm not very claustrophobic, but uh, hey, what can you say? These stairs right here were the hardest part of the entire hike. Uh, proceed with caution. There's an easier way to go around. After you get to the top of the stairs, you're in another enclosed area with about three stories of spiral staircase. And at this point, my heart was about to explode. Like I was saying, I couldn't even go up the stairs, two flights of stairs on the cruise ship yesterday. Now I had to uh, scale <laughs> like a thousand stairs, maybe. It's pretty brutal. Uh, this is like an old closed down section here. And uh, as you can see, there's... Alright, you can see this is like uh, an old bunker uh, for defending the island, probably for World War II. And uh, you can see Waikiki Beach down here. You can see parts of Honolulu over there. Pretty sick view. <laughs> I'm at the very top here. The uh, diamond hike trail, something like that. A little bit delirious right now. Uh, I had to go up like 80 flights of stairs. And, uh, All right, this is the actual top of the video. I'm in the Diamond Head Crater Trail. That's insane. Yep, here we are at the top of Diamond Head Crater. And I'm legit surprised I made it up here. Uh, I definitely should have taken a lift to the Diamond Head Crater Park area below. Uh, walking there from Waikiki Beach was kind of ridiculous. I did have a couple hours to kill though, so. But yeah, this is an impressive view, to say the least. So, I mean, how bad is it I can't even see the cruise ship from here? Like, here's Waikiki Beach. Here's that park I walked by. Walked by. Waikiki Beach is this crescent. There's another beach over there. Ship must be hidden behind these buildings or it left without me, but that's about four and a half miles away where the ship is. So, holy cow. The insane view, huh? I almost died getting up here, but hey, what can you do? Made it to the top, and then I made it to the top again. To the top again. And then I made it, ascended the final three steps, and uh, got my pictures. It's time to get out of here. So that kind of, at least I'm, I'll be going downhill on the way back. Ouch, my knee. Ouch, my knee. Ouch, my knee. Ouch, my knee. Not only am I battling a sinus infection, I also sprained my ACL like a couple weeks before this trip. 
I was I was really disappointed because I was like, how the hell am I gonna climb the crater with uh, more, but... busted knee? But it actually wasn't too bad up until the descent. I don't know. I should go back down. So this was the peak that I was just at, and I'm heading back down. Uh, like 10 days before this trip, I like sprained or tore my ACL. And on the way up, it wasn't really uh, an issue, but now it's kind of it's kind of annoying. It's, each step is like a razor, but it's okay. I've only got like only three miles straight down if I can. All right, I'll just uh, read this. And it'll be the uh, homework part of this uh, vlog there. The crater measures 0.65 miles across. The summit of the crater rim is about 500 feet above the crater floor. Liehai, or Diamond Head Crater, has been a strategic location for military coastal defense since the establishment of Fort Ruger in 1906. Early fortifications built between 1908 and 1916 were designed to defend against attacks from the sea. I could hear some sirens, so I looked down at the base of the crater and I could see a what well, looks like a fire truck and maybe paramedics down there. So something was going on. I can't believe I made it up these stairs. I gotta see the medevac. There's a medevac helicopter here. We're at 500 feet elevation. Check this out. So what I've been told about this medevac is uh, there was a group of high school students in front of me. Uh, one of them uh, like passed out or had heat stroke or something like that. I, only, I got this information from somebody else on the trail, so I don't even know if it's true or not, but uh, yeah, you can see I'm loading them up into the helicopter, and then they fly them down to the base of the crater, and then they uh, get into an ambulance, but yeah, it's pretty crazy. I can't imagine this happens very often. There wasn't much room up there to even land a helicopter, so the skill of the pilot to land on such a small area was it is really impressive and, uh, it's one had heat stroke up here so some high school kids there's like a group of like 30 high school kids in front of me and uh this one passed out or something it appears the rescue was successful they got the passenger on there and they're heading back to the base of the, the center of the crater where there's an ambulance waiting to uh pick them up and uh who knows what's going on over there, but yep. Same helicopter did another flyby, but didn't pick anyone up. So yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on. Well guys, I just finished my last bottle of water, but back on paved I'm back on the side still a little bit of incline but uh, most of the elevation is done now so I survived Diamond Head Crater decline after hiking from Waikiki Beach to Diamond Head Crater up the crater to the highest viewpoint and then back down uh, I had no other choice but to uber back to the cruise ship see I could have just went to the uber ride this would have been way way easier than hiking to the top of the mountain <laughs> See, this is a sweet, like, sweet shot here. Yeah, bro, that's a fun one, man. I mean, yeah, I've been to, a, I mean, I've been to cities all over the U.S. I mean, this place, scenery-wise, obviously, it's not even, it's not even the same comparison, you know, it's like. It could have been so long ago, like. Yeah, she's a monster. 
Uh, it was pretty good, but the Pacific, uh... Alright, I am back at the cruise ship terminal. Beat to shit, all sun-drenched, but, uh... I had a badass Uber driver, and uh, I asked him what's the best spot to eat in town, and uh, he recommended the Highway Inn, which is actually pretty close. Goes there like, uh... You know, like, goes there like, uh, you know, on special occasions, you know, with his wife, like, once a month or whatever. Yeah, it's like... You gotta check out these cool places like this. Make sure you bring your passport because they were denying people, even if you have your key fob and your driver's license. Like, they don't, they want your uh, passport. They don't really care about your driver's license. Here comes a little mini cruise ship. It has some little cars on there. Is that a ferry or a party boat? Looks like a party boat. Probably coming from one of the other islands, I'm thinking. Damn, look at that sunset fading in the back. Needless to say, I'm feeling better. Here is downtown Honolulu at night. You almost have a full moon.